by 1930 all strong peasants in general were being so-called all peasants strong in management, strong in work, or even strong merely in convictions. The term kulak was used to smash the strength of the peasantry. Let us remember, let us open our eyes, only a dozen years have passed since the great decree on the land that very decree without the and there were poor peasants. How could that be? Sometimes it was the result of differences in initial stock and equipment. Sometimes it may have resulted from luck in the mixture of the family. But wasn't it most often a matter of hard work and persistence? And now these peasants, whose bread grain had fed Russia in 1928, were hastily uprooted by local good-for-nothings and city people sent in from outside. Like raging beasts, abandoning every concept of humanity, abandoning all humane principles which had evolved through the Anilenia, they began to round up the very best farmers and their F.A. Inilis, and to drive them, stripped of their possessions, naked, into the northern wastes, into the tundra and the taiga. Such a mass movement could not help but develop subsequent ramifications. It became necessary to rid the villages also of those peasants who had merely manifested an aversion to joining the collective farms, or an absence of inclination for the collective life tilde which they had never seen with their own eyes, about which they knew nothing, and which they suspected we now know how well founded their suspicions were would mean a life of forced labor and famine under the leadership of loafers. Then it was also necessary to get rid of those peasants, some of them not at all prosperous, who, because of their daring, their physical strength, their determination, their outspokenness at meetings, and their love of justice, were favorites with their fellow villagers and by virtue of their independence were therefore dangerous to the leadership of the collective farm.25 Beyond this, in every village there were people who in one way or another had personally gotten in the way of the local activists. This was the perfect time to settle accounts with them of jealousy, envy, insult. A new word was needed for all these new victims as a class, and it was born. By this time it had no social or economic content whatsoever, but it had a marvelous sound, podkolaknik, a person aiding. 25. This kind of peasant and his fate were portrayed immortally in the Saligan's novel. The history of our sewage disposal system I-57 the Kulaks. In other words, I consider you an accomplice of the enemy. And that finishes you. The most tattered landless laborer in the countryside could quite easily be labeled a Pakulaknik six and so it was that these two terms embraced everything that constituted the essence of the village, its energy, its keenness of pit, its love of hard work, its resistance, and its conscience. They were drawn up by the youth and collectivization was accomplished. New waves rose from the collectivized villages. One of them was a wave of agricultural records. Everywhere they began to discover record agronomists who up until that year had worked honestly all their lives but who now purposely sowed 
2,000 unarrested members of the Working Peasants Party, the TKP. Certain agronomists failed to put into effect the profound instructions of Lysenko and in one such way, in 1931, Lurk, the so-called king of the potato, was sent to Kazakhstan. Others carried out the Lysenko directives too precisely and thus exposed their absurdity. In 1934 Peskov agronomists sowed flax on the snow, exactly as Lysenko had ordered. The seeds swelled up, grew moldy, and died. The big fields lay empty for a year. Lysenko could not say that the snow was a kulak or that he himself was an ass. He accused the agronomists of being kulaks and of distorting his technology. And the agronomists went off to Siberia. Beyond all this, in almost every machine and tractor station wrecking in the repairing of tractors was discovered and that is how the failures of the first collective farm years were explained. There was a wave for harvest losses, losses in comparison with the arbitrary harvest figures announced the preceding spring by the Commission for Determination of the Harvest. There was a wave for failure to fulfill obligations undertaken for delivery to the state of bread grains. The district party committee had undertaken the obligation, and the collective farm had not fulfilled it go to prison. There was a wave for sniffing ears, the nighttime sniffing of individual ears of grain in the field a totally new type of. 26. I remember very well that in our youth this term seemed quite logical. There was nothing in the least unclear about it. S8. I. The Gulag Archipelago. Agricultural activity, a new type of harvesting. The wave of those caught doing this was not small it included many tens of thousands of peasants, many of them not even adults but boys, girls, and small children whose elders had sent them out at night to sniff, because they had no hope of receiving anything from the collective farm for their daytime labor. For this bitter and not very productive occupation, an extreme of poverty to which the peasants had not been driven even in serfdom, the courts handed out a full measure. Ten years for what ranked as an especially dangerous theft of socialist property under the notorious law of August 7, 1932 which in prisoners' as lingo was known simply as the law of seven eight. This law of seven eights produced another big, separate wave from the construction projects of the first and second five-year plans, from transport, trade, and industry. Big thefts were turned over to the NK. BD. This wave must further be kept in mind as one that kept on flowing steadily for the next 15 years, until 1947, especially during the war years. Then in 1947 the original law was expanded and made more harsh. Now at last we can catch our breath. Now at last all the mass waves are pointing to an end. Comrade Molotov said on May 17, 1933, We do not see our task as being mass repressions. Phew! At last! Be gone! Nighttime fears! But what's that dog howling out there? Go get him! Go get him! And here we are! The Kirov wave from Leningrad has begun! While it lasted the tension was acknowledged to be so great that special staffs of the NK. BD were set up in each and every district executive community of the city and an accelerated judicial procedure was introduced. Even earlier, it had not been famous for being slow. And there was no right of appeal. There had been no appeal earlier. It is also believed that one quarter of Leningrad was purged. 
cleaned out in 1934 minus 1935. Let this estimate be disproved by those who have the exact statistics and are willing to publish them. To be sure, this wave took in much more than Leningrad alone. It had a substantial impact on the rest of the country in a form that was consistent though chaotic. The firing from the civil service of all those still left there whose fathers had been priests, all former noblewomen, and all persons having relatives abroad. Among such lashing waves as this, certain modest, changeless, the history of our sewage disposal system I-59. Wavelets always got lost. They were little heard of, but they, too, kept flowing on and on. There were Schutzbeindlers who had lost the class battles in Vienna and had come to the fatherland of the world proletariat for refuge. There were Esperantists a harmful group which Stalin undertook to smoke out during the years when Hitler was doing the same thing. There were the unliquidated remnants of the Free Philosophic Society illegal philosophical circles. There were teachers who disagreed with the advanced laboratory team system of instruction. In 1933, for instance, Natalia Ivanovna Bugayenko was arrested by the Rostov GPU. But in the third month of her interrogation, a government decree suddenly announced that the system was a faulty one. And she was let go. There were employees of the political Red Cross, which, through the efforts of Yekaterina Peshkova, was still defending its existence. of all there was a category I have not yet named, a wave that was continually flowing. Section 10, also known as R.A. Counter-Revolutionary Agitation, and also known as ASA Anti-Soviet Agitation. The wave of Section 10 was perhaps the most constant of all. It never stopped, and whenever there was another big wave, as, for instance, in 1937, 1945, and 1949, its waters became particularly swollen. Point two seven. Paradoxically enough, every act of the all-penetrating, eternally wakeful organs, over a span of many years, was based solely on one article of the 140 articles of the non-general division of the criminal sea, of 1926. One can find more epithets in praise of this article than Turgenev once asked Tilda M. B. Led to praise the Russian language, or Nekrasov to praise Mother Russia. Great, 
powerful, abundant, highly ramified, multi-form, wide-sweeping 58, which summed up the world not so much through the exact terms of its sections as in their extended dialectical interpretation. Who among us has not experienced its all-encompassing embrace? In all truth, there is no step, thought, action, or lack of action under the heavens which could not be punished by the heavy hand of Article 58. The article itself could not be worded in such broad terms, but it proved possible to interpret it this broadly. Article 58 was not in that division of the code dealing with political crimes, and nowhere was it categorized as political. No, it was included, with crimes against public order and organized gangsterism, in a division of crimes against the state. Thus the criminal code starts off by refusing to recognize anyone under its jurisdiction as a political offender. All are simply criminals. Article 58 consisted of 14 sections. In section 1 we learn that any action, and, according to 27, this particular unremitting wave grabbed up anyone at all at any moment. But when it came to outstanding intellectuals in the 30s, they sometimes considered it cleverer to fabricate a case based on some conspicuously shameful violation, like Peter Asti, or, in the case of Professor Pletnev. The allegation that, left alone with a woman patient, he bit her breast. A national newspaper reports such an incident and just try to deny it. The History of Our Sewage Disposal System I-61 Article 6 of the
of their art. My detailed, physico-chemical investigations definitely showed me that they are always most pernicious in those contemporary artists or actors who perform in these theaters of theirs. The noxious effect on all the rest of your favorites of the totality of the radiations given off by these actors has become distinctly noticeable in their present civilization, particularly during recent times. Although in previous epics certain of the ordinary beings there also took up that profession, on the one hand, data for Tasnamusian properties, did not always become completely crystallized in the presence of every one of them, and on the other hand, the other beings instinctively sensed the maleficent influence radiating from these professionals and hence were on their guard and took great care to behave toward them in a corresponding manner. Indeed, in former centuries these artists or actors were relegated by other beings everywhere to the lowest caste and were regarded with contempt and even at the present time in many communities, for instance on the continent of Asia, it is not acceptable to shake hands with them, as is almost always the custom when meeting beings like oneself. In these communities, it is still considered defiling to sit at the same table with these actors and to eat with them. But on the continent that is now the chief place of what is called their cultured existence, contemporary beings not only inwardly consider these actors to be on the same level as themselves, but even copy their outer appearance and at the present time imitate them in everything. A good example of what I have just said is the custom, now followed by your favorite, of shaving the beard and mustache. You should know that in past epics these terrestrial professional actors always had to go about during the process of their ordinary existence with mustaches and beards shaved off. shave off these expressors of their masculinity and activity, first of all because, constantly playing the roles of other beings, they often had to change their appearance, putting suitable Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank <laughs> you.